On a cold, imposing wall in northern China, there lies a place so shrouded in secrecy it's been labeled the most mysterious prison in existence. A name that strikes fear in those who hear it. This prison holds a unique set of individuals, people who once wielded significant power. Every inch of this facility is meticulously designed to ensure that these high-profile inmates cannot rebuild their influence or reveal state secrets. Some call it the Garden of Fallen Angels, while others refer to it as a concentration camp for high-level failures. Hidden within its walls are countless secrets waiting to be uncovered. Today, let's dive into the story of Chincheng Prison, where disgraced high-ranking officials face their downfall. Are officials still officials behind bars? Since President Xi Jinping took office and began his anti-corruption campaign, at least 130 high-ranking corrupt officials have been detained over the past decade. Today, Qincheng Prison, dedicated to housing these officials, is full, and China is now constructing more prisons to keep up. When these corrupt officials were in power, they lived extravagantly on the backs of the people. Even in prison, they continue to receive special treatment. Ordinary suspects held in detention centers face harsh conditions. They are often forced to squat in a corner, beaten with belts, stripped, and made to crawl on the floor before being fingerprinted and humiliated. They are then crammed into 10 square meter rooms with about 15 other people, eating and using the bathroom in the same space, constantly monitored, with no access to clocks or sunlight. Food is sparse, with three meals a day that lack vegetables or oil. Some are forced into labor, with a rare chance to stand on a small balcony for 15 minutes every two weeks to see the sun. In contrast, life is vastly different for officials in Qincheng Prison. Here, staff are instructed to act more like service personnel than regular guards, with strict rules prohibiting them from verbally or physically reprimanding prisoners. Unlike the typical Chinese prison conditions where 12 to 14 inmates share a room, Qincheng prisoners enjoy private cells that are spacious, up to 20 square meters, and come with amenities like private bathrooms, washing machines, carpets, and the freedom to wear their own clothes. Some prisoners even wear suits. This level of comfort takes serving time to a whole new level, leaving many to wonder, just how high does one's status have to be to earn such treatment? Notable residents of Qincheng include Bo Xilai, Zhou Yongkong, and Ling Jihua. Bo Xilai, removed from power by Xi Jinping, has been in Qincheng since 2013. Ironically, his father, Bo Yibo, was also imprisoned here for 10 and a half years after being convicted of counter-revolutionary crimes. According to the Hong Kong-based Ming Pao, Bo Xilai's meals include fish, meat, and occasionally specialties like seafood. Phoenix TV reports that his daily food allowance reaches 200 yuan, far above the standard 300 yuan monthly allowance for regular prisoners. He occasionally even gets to enjoy special dishes like shark cartilage and sea cucumber. The cook preparing his meals was once a top chef at a major hotel in Beijing. Bo lives in a private 16 square meter room where he can practice calligraphy and wear suits. He even has a personal mobile phone to make monthly calls to his family. Zhou Yongkong, a former member of the Politburo Standing Committee, is the most senior inmate currently at Qincheng. He has a private yard and a small plot where he grows fruits and vegetables. According to South China Morning Post, his family members bring back fruits and pumpkins he has grown when they visit him. Sun Zhengchai once considered a rising sixth-generation leader of the Communist Party and former party chief of Chongqing, has been at Qincheng since his downfall in July 2017. Rumor has it he's so obsessed with the mobile game Honor of Kings that he once delayed a work meeting, refusing to leave his car until he finished his game, leaving dozens of staff waiting outside. Netizens mocked him as the leader most addicted to Honor of Kings. He once cried when his phone was confiscated for playing the game in prison. Qincheng also houses Chen Liang Yu, former Shanghai party secretary, who lives in a nearly 20 square meter cell with a private bathroom and Western style toilet. Chen spends time practicing Tai Chi outside his cell and once requested permission to use personal funds to improve his meals, including a request for red wine, though it was denied. Some officials just can't seem to let go of their VIP lifestyle, 
even in prison. Many corrupt officials have hidden stashes of money through family and friends, and they know exactly how to work the system and get into the guards' good graces. By bribing prison staff, some manage to get medical leave or even serve their sentences outside of prison without anyone the wiser. Under the rule of the Chinese Communist Party, it seems almost anything can happen, and these cases are far from rare. One of the most absurd stories reported by Chinese media was about Ma Jiangguo, a former deputy district chief in Chengdu, sentenced to 15 years. But instead of the typical prison life, Ma avoided prison clothes, skipped prison food, and was allowed to dine at hotels and restaurants. He even went home at night to see his family and friends. He kept cash and cigarettes in his cell and used mobile devices to manage his company's business as if he were on a break rather than behind bars. How did he get away with this? It wasn't just luck. He knew how to work his connections in prison. During his sentence, Ma covered fuel costs for guards' cars, paid a monthly salary of 2,000 yuan to a guard named Liu Ba, and even helped another guard pay off his mortgage. Eventually, Ma handed over more than 300,000 yuan in bribes to various guards. In the end, he got an extra five years tacked onto his sentence for bribery. What is the real purpose of Qincheng Prison? Qincheng Prison, often referred to as a five-star VIP prison, was ordered to be built by Mao Zedong, the founder of the People's Republic of China, and designed by Soviet experts in 1958. Unlike other prisons in China, which fall under the Prison Administration Bureau, Qincheng is directly managed by the Ministry of Public Security. Its director holds the same rank as a provincial city mayor, reflecting the prison's elite status. Historically, Qincheng has held a unique roster of prisoners. Former officials of the Qing dynasty, Japanese POWs, nationalist army generals, revolutionary leaders like the Lin Biao clique and the Gang of Four, and even two former first ladies, wives of Mao Zedong and Liu Shaoqi. In a way, the list of Qincheng's guests reads like a modern history book of China. Qincheng's entrance is dark red, styled like a guardhouse, and unmarked except for two large three-meter iron doors flanked by small side doors and a stainless steel electric gate. Reflective strips line the entryway, armed guards stand watch, and a sign warns, no loitering at the gate, no photography. Surveillance cameras cover the perimeter. Originally, Qingcheng consisted of four white buildings numbered 201 to 204, totaling 400 cells. Each cell block is three stories high, forming an enclosed courtyard with fenced areas for prisoners to spend time outdoors. Prisoners here are identified by a four-digit number, with the first two digits representing the year they entered and the last two indicating their order of entry. For example, prisoner 9527 would be the 27th inmate admitted in 1995. Qincheng was once quiet and, according to some rumors, was even on the verge of being shut down. But after Xi Jinping came to power, launching a major anti-corruption campaign alongside Wang Qishan after the 18th Party Congress, the prison saw renewed activity. Since then, close to 5 million officials have been investigated, and over 1.3 million have been arrested across all levels. Actually, the CCP set up a prison like Qingcheng to contain high-level officials who may know damaging secrets about the party. By keeping these officials together and under close watch, the party minimizes the risk of leaks. Qin Cheng's relatively comfortable conditions seem designed to keep these officials calm and discourage them from talking. For those who might make a political comeback, this respectful treatment helps maintain their loyalty to the party. But with so many high-ranking officials recently detained, Qin Cheng has become overcrowded. This means some officials who would have once gone to Qincheng are now sent to regular prisons. For example, Lao Angguo and Zhou Yongnan, once top officials in Mao Ming, Guangdong, ended up in a local prison for embezzlement. Their experiences were far from VIP. They shared a cramped cell with 14 other inmates, woke up at 6.30 a.m. daily to memorize prison rules, and had strict boundaries they couldn't cross. Their main job was assembling light bulb filaments tricky work that required a precise touch. At first, Lao could barely manage 1,000 bulbs a day, even holding off on bathroom breaks to meet his quota. 
but with practice, he pushed that number to 4,000, his fingers moving as quickly as a teenager playing video games. Zhou, at 63, produced fewer bulbs due to age and health issues, but still managed 2,000 a day, even with nearsightedness and diabetes. This new reality shows how lower-ranked officials are treated in Xi Jinping's new era. Xincheng has become both a punishment center and a lesson in anti-corruption. The party now uses it as a warning tool, arranging tours for officials from central agencies and law enforcement to witness the consequences firsthand. Even the National Audit Office sent over 50 senior officials on tours of Qincheng as a deterrent. It's hard not to see a sense of irony here. In a system where the party is above the law, prisons like Qincheng feel almost like a game. Officials catch each other, detaining one today and replacing them tomorrow, all while knowing they could end up there themselves. In a world where loyalty to the right political faction matters more than the law, it's not about justice, but about choosing the right side. At the top, power struggles play out like rival gang feuds, with laws serving as a convenient mask for the winners, and Chincheng is just a gilded cage for those who fall from grace. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of power and politics, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos.